Hey, it's Mike Sikoski from A is for Atom. Um, you're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini, and we have another uh, interview for you guys today. Uh, with uh, Mike Sikoski of uh, A is for Adam. We're gonna get in, we're gonna get into all that in a minute. Very talented songwriter, very interesting person. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank my sponsor first of all before we get too far into this. My longtime and long suffering sponsor, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine, pplmag.com. It's Pittsburgh's first internet radio, TV network, and online community magazine and business directory. Uh, you can listen to, watch, download, receive emails with the latest audio and video created by the members of the community. There's articles, coupons, and you can even find businesses. If you're so inclined, start your own magazine page and get your own uh, video and audio podcast up there, just like we do here at the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Uh, positively, Pittsburgh Live magazine sees about a million unique uh, visitors each month. So it's a great place to kind of uh, be seen. That is pplmag.com. But like I said, you're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, and that is ludinirockandrollcircus.com. Doing two interviews, putting out two interviews a week. Uh, and I believe at this point we will have uh, started uh, our uh, reboot of our music podcast where you can hear a lot of great rock and roll. That is ludinirockandrollcircus.com to keep... Uh, abreast of everything that we have going on there. Uh, I was, uh, as I was mentioning when we came on, uh, that I've got Mike Sikoski here, the man behind the arty, literate, indie pop project A is for Adam. Uh, he's had a distinguished career in the music business so far, but a few transformative events drastically altered his path. Now he welcomes a new era of human creativity with a bold new aesthetic and a thrilling monthly singles release platform. Mike Sikoski, welcome to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hey, thanks, Lou. How are you doing? <laughs> Good, buddy. Thanks for getting on the call. Hey, um, yeah. let's let's give every let's take a step back to this. I want to talk about all this stuff. You're doing some really cool stuff. You're putting out like an A and a B side every month, which is very cool. It's a little different than, you know, people putting out an EP or an album every year. So it kind of keeps the flow going. I want to get into all that. But I'd like to kind of get back, I'd like to go back to the beginning um, with you because you have a pretty deep musical background. Uh, you've studied music very, very seriously at a couple of different universities. So why don't you take us back, Mike, and tell us what got you interested in music in the first place and then sort of like give us the Reader's Digest version as to uh, how you progressed from there. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a pretty much, you know, the family thing. My, my mom and my my dad both. I mean, they were um, divorced when I was young, but you know, my dad was way well into the um, classical music, and so he took me to a lot of concerts for that. Like especially, I um, grew up in Los Angeles, so like they're on the Hollywood Bowl. And then uh, my mom was actually an Irish folk singer in Los Angeles, and uh, you know, I performed on a couple of her things, and I was I was pretty young when I started doing that. So. Um, then I just, you know, my dad was in the military, so I moved around to a lot of different cities and started playing in uh, in different bands. I wanted to get into some rock and roll, and so I started doing that more than... So what did you do? Did you pick up the guitar, or what, what did you do to get into rock and roll? I started playing the bass. It was, it was pretty bass. funny. My mom's, um, my mom's friend bought the bass for me, and I was just like, you know, I wanted to rock it out. And so was, the first songs that I learned were like Iron Maiden songs. <laughs> from, the, from the from the killers record and i really i really still like those songs a lot you know um i think murders on the rue morgue or one of those songs that's one of the um the ones i learned that had a cool little bass intro on that so yeah, I, yeah, I started playing, Harris, yeah yeah and he's he's still one of my favorites and so i i just you know i got into to that a lot of uh you know serious metal stuff i mean my first concert was uh was Slayer, <laughs> and then I, then I moved it back then to the East Coast. I moved to the East Coast, and they weren't listening to much of that. So I started getting into Led Zeppelin and started doing a lot of that. So I learned a lot of John Paul Jones bass lines, The Who, all the stuff I could do to to like become a really good bass player. And so I just was always playing bass, and then I started singing. You know, for because the singers never showed up, so then they're like, "Oh, you're pretty good. So why don't you why don't you?" keep singing. I'm like, all right, so I've been just either a, a bass player, um, a backup singer, but now I'm just trying to do a, 
the, my own lead singing and then the whole production and everything. Okay, so 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 then you so you become a singer, and everything. Else, but your music, you don't. Um, just so nobody at home is confused because we haven't played your song yet. You're okay, not a cool. metal musician. <laughs> no, no. I and you like you a... kind of progress into some other sounds and um, tell us a little bit about what led you to get into uh, going going to music school and what did you study there? Yeah, so then I was I was studying. Um, film scoring so I did a lot um, okay I started out like music technology so I did a lot of the um you know the engineering and and then I, I did um it was like an engineering composition um I started doing a lot of film score composition but then I en- ended up with the music technology degree so I it was a master's at NYU so I I, I did a lot of um you know the, it's a pretty you know well-rounded degree and I mean I was working for the university so they helped me pay for it so so I could just kind of take whatever classes I wanted and so um I I did a lot of programming in something called Max MSP a lot of work with Ableton um and I just kept finding that I can you know do a lot of stuff with the computers so I've been working more on computer music and I you know I've always loved classical so I've been you know I learned a lot of classical composition so and it kind of that even kind of relates a little bit to the to the heavy metal stuff because they seem to be very like it's very you know some of that crazy heavy metal is very classical in in, in its writing so I, so I um I'm able to get back to that my I guess my roots if you will but I still <laughs> really, really love the the folk singing the Beatles a lot of a lot of harmonies a lot of um you know uh, I've done a, a lot of vocal production and work like that. And the, when you, know, you said that you learned a lot of classical music, now what did you did you learn what instrument did you learn the, the the classical music on? Well I was I was um you know, I did piano at, mm-hmm. and uh, and guitar. So I I really picked up on the, the guitar. And so I did a lot of songwriter courses and um and what I did, when I took a lot of orchestration classes so they they teach you how to to kind of you, you know take a take a piano piece and turn it into a, a classical mm-hmm. piece, you know. So I, I did, I mean, I did that in the, in terms of film scoring, which is very, very um, much these days kind of you know, based on like Gary Goldsmith and John Williams and yeah. people like that. So it's like a lot of heavy on the, the bass trombones, a lot of trombones and tubas and a lot of action, <laughs> a lot of, yeah. a lot of serious, serious <laughs> string, string instruments. And so I, I learned how to do, you know, taking just a simple piece, or, to, or not a simple piece, or a piano piece, and put put it to um, a bigger orchestration. You know, um, how when so so were were you, at this point were you all were you writing pop songs all all along, or was that something that you started yeah, to do later I on? Yeah, I can't I can't get away from it. I keep like I, I was trying to like oh I want to do film scoring full time, and I just took these you know songwriter classes because I'm I'm like oh. That's, still like songwriting but then I just I, I don't know the more song, songwriting I did the more I wanted to just stick to that because I mean film scoring is a lot you're working a lot with a, um, a director and they're just pretty much telling you vaguely what, what they want and then I got a little, got a little tired of it a little bored with it and okay. and, and so I, I just thought hey well, songwriting that sounds that sounds good <laughs> and uh, I mean it's not not neither of these are easy roads by any means but you know I uh I definitely can't stop writing so I just got to keep keep putting them out that's why I like that whole a side b side it just kind of keeps me motivated and and no one's really buying full-on records these days anyway I mean from from somebody who's kind of coming up oh, okay now. okay so so now, am I now? So looking over your bio, now were you a side musician for some people for a while, or, or yeah, I did, you just, I did. Tell me a little bit about that. I did when I was in Boulder, Colorado. I, I played with the band. They they were kind of it was kind of a big jam band back in the you know late nineties. They were called Zuba. Um, they uh, you know the biggest thing that the we did with that band was uh, something about Mary's soundtrack. We were in that and uh, oh, okay. did a lot of um, touring with them. I think it was like, you know, 200, 200 days out of the year. And then I, after that, um, 
after that ended, I joined a, a blues guy. His name was Vince Converse. And so I did a lot of about probably the last more like 150 days of touring, and then I and I got kind of burned out on it. And were you bass? Were you bass? Were you doing bass in these in these bands? I was bass, yeah, bass player. You were playing bass guitar. You were the bass player. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, all right. So when do you launch this project? A is for Adam. When when did now? When did this pop up? It came out in around 2012. I uh, I had a lot of. I mean, I was like, oh, I gotta do this. I've been I've been playing around solo, doing open mics in New York City for a while. I have my buddies from uh, music music school playing with me sometimes, and I just was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna start this thing. And I I had a bunch of names. I, I like the A is for Adam one because it's a <laughs> kind of a, a strange name, and I. I uh, that's but like a that's super, from like a fifties uh, um, thing yeah, about weird, uh, radiation or something, right? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's this, it's this weird old movie from from like you know uh, from like nineteen fifty two. It's kind of a propaganda film for atomic <laughs> energy. <laughs> and I, I thought it was hysterical. Then I was like, oh man, that's a that's a that's a good band name. I can't believe nobody took it. So I just <laughs> I just I just did that. So it took me a while to get it going, but um, you know, because if I'm you know I'm doing it pretty much by myself so it's just like you know i got i got a day, day job or you know doing the things i got to do in new york to the hustle and uh and so I, uh, <laughs> yeah the you know hustle but i i didn't want to do the side guy thing anymore because it, you know, I, I just felt kind of um inhibited again it's the same thing as you know not quite the same thing but you know all these guys especially in in the city got to got to really you know work a lot and a lot of crazy hours and tours and I got, you know, I wanted to still love music and the touring is cool and all. And it was like my rock and roll dream. A lot of my buddies who didn't do that or like, you know, they wish that they could or they can. And so I'm just like, well, I like the tour, but I, I, I did it. <laughs> kind of Been there, excited. done that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah well, I'm kind of excited. Get brought, especially if you're like itching, you know, you're a songwriter and you're itching to kind of like, you know, really concentrate on that, you know, and what, and like in, in, in New York, what, if you're going to be a, like a freelance bass player or something, what, you're going to work eight days a week, sometimes exactly. like two gigs a day and stuff like that to make, yeah, and you, you got to be make like, money. And you got to be the, the, so good. I mean, I, and I, I hire some of these guys, they play in my band sometimes and they are really good bass players. It's like, you know, it's a, um, it, it's a, there's always someone really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how good you are, there's always that 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 sob shows up and can blow you away. And you're like, God damn it, I thought I was pretty good. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, man, I could have spent like like ten more hours on on the couch or something. I don't know to get, to get a third of the, as good as that guy. But you know, but everybody's really nice. I, I always have really, really. Tell us, great, great these, uh, we're gonna play. Um, we're gonna play your song Amsterdam here in a minute, but tell us a little bit about your in your your approach to songwriting because um, you have a kind of uh, there's an eclectic mix here. There's a lot of kind of different styles and sounds that seem to kind of come together to create uh, the sound of uh, A is for Adam. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, a lot of times, like with song ideas, especially, I'm I'm kind of I'm just being kind of open to whatever happens with it. You know, like sometimes I'll, I'll come up with a, a melody and I'll say, Oh, that's, that's a good melody. And then I, you know, or, a, or just a hook, a chorus and uh, hooks or words at the same time. A lot of times it's just kind of like, I have this idea for a song, like say, you know, driving down the street or, or anything. Or, but a lot of it has to do with me walking around the city, you know, usually just kind of, or, or being on the train or doing just some kind of, you know, zoning out and the, the songs come to me that way. And I try to record them onto my uh, iPhone without seeming like a, a nut job. But, <laughs> well, it's uh, New York City, so everybody's yeah. walking around talking to themselves. So they're, they're all talking. So I just pretend like I'm on the phone and kind of sing these, uh, <laughs> these melodies. So it's, it's kind of funny. Because this guy walking around singing to somebody on the phone, but like, you know, <laughs> But it's like, you know, you're right in New York, you just kind of blend in, so you can just do whatever. So it, a lot of it is just being open-minded and, and like, yeah, it is eclectic, like a, a lot of influences. So I'm trying to 
let them all um, you know, synthesize into something. So it's well, like the uh, Am- Am- that- Amsterdam is a little on that. Uh, like it's more rocking than like say I did the Chasing the Night recently, and so that one's more um, kind of indie electronic y. Right, yeah, yeah. I noticed that it has more like keyboard oriented uh type and thing. Then, Let's go yeah. ahead and uh take a listen to uh Amsterdam. This is uh uh AS for Adam, this is uh, their latest track. Uh Amsterdam, AS for Adam, Amsterdam on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Cut so deep She can't resist the pain She does her makeup In the Amsterdam. Tell us about Amsterdam. Have you been to Amsterdam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amsterdam is a, this song is kind of like, um, I don't know if you heard of this guy, um, the musician Scott Walker from okay. from the 60s, I think. So strange. Okay. Not not the politician, but the, the, um, the singer. He's um, kind of like a... Was he in Big Star? Kind of, he wasn't a Big Star, was he? 
No, he was he was in the Walker Brothers. Okay. It was like this weird. I don't know. There was a documentary about him on 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 Netflix. So definitely I'm, check him out. His real name is John or Noel Engel, but he's a uh, um, you know he writes these really strange songs, and one of them is was kind of like what this is based on. It's like you know the girls of the of the streets, kind of you know trying to get some empathy for for people in positions that you know they don't necessarily want to be in but they have to be so uh, i think that the song is just about the the empathy for you know anybody who needs to you know kind of toe like i'm saying the hustle or, or, or whatever and it doesn't necessarily mean any particular you know thing that like a particular type of profession it just could be anything you know so it's kind of making it vague, but you know, trying to be as specific as possible. But this song um, is, it definitely has some of that vibe from the Scott Walker song called Girls on the Streets. And um, this one's a little more condensed than that one. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot more of a, a story going on there, but this one is just like a more about the emotion of a particular thing. And so I was trying to get into that with, with the song, like just kind of, for you know, think about being in a in a position and just get into the emotion of it. You know, so it's, I think it, this one came out pretty well that way, and that's kind of the direction I'm leaning with the, the newer songs that I'm doing. You know, it's, it's my older ones are, are more you, you know they're kind of based on the film score thing. A lot of a lot of stuff going on, a lot of key changes, a lot of strange keys and things. So this Amsterdam is more kind of mix of that folk and rock and this raw emotion. Yeah, it kind of builds. It starts out with like a, you know, with that, with that, that, that what is it? Is that a church organ? What is that in the beginning? Yeah, it's just like a simple, like it was kind of funny. We did it kind of uh, a, a Casio thing. Uh, okay. So it's, it's like a cheap, it's supposed to sound cheap. Yeah. You know, but, it, but then it kind of goes into this, uh, you know, the first kind of, you know, bit of, with the chorus, or that's not really a chorus, but whatever, you know, or the, or there's some shouting, and then kind of goes down, and then there's just a guitar. So it's like a, it's kind of a juxtaposition, which we found, I found kind of interesting. Now who's, you know? now, now who's now now you're doing something? Uh, well, first of all, be, before we go too further, now who's in the studio? Are you playing everything, or are you um, bringing yeah, this in one, musicians? This one was um, produced by uh, one of my music uh my fellow um nyu graduates named julian cassia and uh he played i think i played some guitar on this maybe a little bass or it, and uh he was doing the the keyboards and a lot of the uh arrangements so he so it was just he and i just the two of us and i did okay. all, the, all the singing and we, we recorded it up in in hudson new york um it was a good uh that this little church that they turned into a recording studio that's pretty cool, and then um, so it has that kind of open feel, I guess, like the mm-hmm. you know, the church churchy feel. But then, yeah, it was a um, it was pretty pretty cool. I got I really he really got the the vocal performance out of me. I was pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it came, it came, came together. Re- yeah, really nice. <laughs> so tell us a little bit. Tell us about this new sort of uh, program. I don't know what to call it, where you're going to be doing a, a single, an A-side and a B-side you're going to release every month. Like, what yeah, I'm going to try do to that do that. And, like, tell, tell us about this. Yeah, I just wanted to, like, I talked to a couple of people who could have been, like, kind of obsessed about putting out EPs. Like, i got to put out an EP all the time. And then one of my, uh, um, you know, kind of mentors out in Los Angeles said, hey, well, you, you know, you should really consider just putting out singles all the time because, you know, it's a way of keeping the uh, the content flowing, and you don't you don't have to worry about you know you know AP or how it sells or or what it's in. You know, nobody's really it's not really a an album market. It's more a singles market now, anyway. So I um you know, and I I I do love albums and EPs because I love the theme. I'm like a, I love Dark Side of the Moon, and I like from start to finish. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm more the exception than than the rule right now so people don't want to hear every single song on the EP so you sell them out 
as a single so they don't have to buy the whole thing. And I think that's just the way it kind of is right now. So I'm, I'm, and I think at the end of the year, I'll put them, put them into a collection, you know, so people can buy them like people like me who like to have the, the, the collection or a vinyl or, or a, a CD, but you know, well, just, a, a, another thing you could do with that, uh, is um, you know you see you have the single version, and then when you go you when you go to put them together in a compilation of some sort, either an EP or or a, or a full length album, uh, you can remix or create alternate versions that you can only get. Yeah, you only get it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know we what I mean, so, so that way it, it makes the fans. It gives the fans. The people that spend the money on the full, that gives them something special. You know what I mean? They say, okay. So they're pro- and then they, because if they've already gotten all your other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Now they got something that they go like, oh, wow, this is really cool because this is different. And you can, you can do a lot of cool stuff with something like that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of the goal. Like, you know, this is the next thing. And I'm focused on the singles now, but I'll definitely try to do some some remixes or, or something on the collection, you know. Um, but, who are your, like, favorite songwriters? Oh, my favorites. Uh, gosh, it's it's kind of weird. I love Bob Dylan. I don't want to be like um, too much the the you know in the band. I love the the and I was just I really like John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Um, of course. But, I mean that goes without saying. Most people would say that. But I just I love um, you know the Rolling Stones. It's some of my favorite songwriting. It's just you know there's something. Just visceral about it, that and bluesy. But speaking of blues, I I really love Muddy Waters and and I Otis Redding is one of my favorites. Um, you know, just about anything from uh, All My Brothers. Um, God, Eric Clapton and Cream is like one of my all time favorite bands. But you know, Hendrix, of course, and then. Um, uh, you go. I can go on and on, but no, those, are, those, yeah. those, those are my top. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah, I'm, I'm a classic rocker, pretty much. You know. So, yeah, so. But, um, uh, so what? Um, so tell us a little bit about. Tell, talk to a little bit. Uh, t- talk to us a little bit more about playing live. Now, are you when you are you playing out regularly? You prim- do you primarily play with a band, solo? Like, t- tell us what you're doing. So. For live, um, it was the work I've been doing at um, at a place called um, um, Dub Spot and um, also Harvest Works here in New York. A couple of there are a couple of um, you know electronic music places. So I'm trying to take the, the Ableton, which is a you know program that you can have on the computer, mm-hmm. and uh, and kind of invented this live set there. So I, I take care of a lot of the. Uh, you know, I have all the stems in there so that I can I can just uh, take them in or out and have if I want to have a guitar player on the on the set, then I can have a guitar player. Or I can take them take them out with the click track and add a drummer. So I'm just trying to make it very versatile. So in any any moment I can play with a full band, or I can just play it by myself acoustically or kind of like this. My last set I did at a place called Pianos here in New York City was this Wednesday. And it's the first time I did a duo, like the kind of indie duo. So I have the singer named Clara LaFaro, and uh, she's singing backups and you know affecting her voice with the with the um, this kind of delay effect pedal. And uh, and so then I cover everything else on. I'm playing the acoustic guitar with and uh, have the tracks kind of going, but I can manipulate those as well, so that it makes it so I'm not just press and play and and sing along to a track. Um, you know, I can I can change it and you know go to a different part or you know. So I've, I've been working on that, like the live set. It has a lot of you know it reacts to a, a projector, etc. So I have a whole kind of live like a multimedia thing going on. M- multimedia set exactly. So yeah. I, I just trying to make it interesting, you know, trying to give a good show while, while saving my um, I guess saving my budget. If, <laughs> you, you know, I don't want I don't want it to be like like the um like to be I want it to be a great show, but I, I want to do it in the in the in the best way so I can you know really really hit it home you know. And so some yeah. of these songs, my, this was this last show was 
probably my most successful one at it. So I'm starting to actually, because there's a lot going on. You got to, I'm singing, playing guitar, and doing the tracks, and you know, talking to the crowd. So it's like, uh, I'm glad I'm able to. Uh, it, it's it's like a I, I'm a conductor up there or something. Gosh, it's like, it's really <laughs> well, I'm gonna say what we're gonna do is I want you to go ahead and tell everybody about how they can keep up with you and make sure that they don't miss any of these. Um, uh, these uh, A and B sides that you're putting out every month, and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the interview and come back. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a bonus, and I want you to get into a little bit more detail about h- how you run this live because I think a lot of people, a lot of musicians, would be interested to know about that. Oh, cool. But go ahead yeah. before we do that. Before we do that, let's go tell everybody out there how they can keep up with you so that they don't miss <laughs> one of your singles that you yeah. that you have putting out each month. Go ahead. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you can get me on uh, Twitter. It's um, A is for Adam. Um, I'm on Instagram. Same same thing. A is for Adam. Um, the website is www.aisforadam.com, and uh, Facebook uh, A is for Adam Music. And then you can find me on. Um, I've been putting out everything on Bandcamp, which is also just A is for Adam, and then CD Baby, which is uh, I believe A is for Adam as well. Uh, yeah, guys, just so you know, it's A T O M. Yeah, A is for Adam. Always, A-D-A-M. Yeah. Some people don't get always, that mixed up. <laughs> I'm always saying at, at, at some. I gotta remind myself to say at some. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, I'm on iTunes as well and Spotify. You can find me in those. Well, guys, make sure that you go out there and you uh, you uh, bookmark uh, A is for Adam's uh, websites and everything, so that you, you don't miss anything. These are some great songs and. Uh, um, Mike is a dynamite songwriter and uh, oh, uh, musician. Thanks. Yeah, and yeah, so you guys don't want to miss that. Mike and I are going to do a bonus question here in a minute. We're going to wrap up the official podcast this time, though. Guys, you are listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. That is Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. Uh, if you like A is for Adam, if you like bands like Flying Joe's and Vexine and The Manimals and all these great bands that uh, we've been uh, featuring here on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, if you think that they deserve to be heard by more people, I highly recommend that you go to supportindierock.com, and that is a place that we've set up where, where we can uh, start to put together some programs that will allow us to do a lot more for acts like A is for Adam other than just interview them, but really help get their music out there. So that is supportindierock.com. One more time, shout out to my sponsor, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine, pplmag.com. Thank you so much for being our longtime sponsor. Guys, you are listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. This has been my interview with Mike Sikoski from A is for Adam. That is A is for Atom, A-T-O-M, Dot com to keep up with everything they've got going on. Guys, thanks so much for listening. LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com and we'll catch you guys on the next podcast.